Hello and welcome to this video where today we're looking at Ohm's Law and current potential difference graphs. Now the vast majority of this will be familiar from GCSE, so um, this is basically just a recap. Um, so we saw in the last video uh, that the potential difference um, V and the current in the circuit uh, or going through a component I are, are proportional to each other. So if you increase the potential difference, then you increase the current, um, and that the constant of proportionality was the resistance. So we wrote it like this. So we said that the potential difference is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance. Um, now we can check that this is true for, for various different components, um, and we could draw graphs like this. So this is a, a current potential difference graph, and the way we would do it is by this. So experimentally, we would have a power supply, we would have um, our component that we're looking at, the, the voltmeter goes around the component as we saw in the last video and the ammeter is part of the actual circuit so it can measure the current going through the circuit. And we wanted, what we want to do is we want to alter the potential difference and measure the current. So we've got a number of ways we could do that. What we could potentially do is we could take a variable resistor like this and pop it in our circuit. And so for this, that's what we'll do this time. We'll alter the resistance of the circuit by changing the resistance of this thing. When we change the resistance of this, it will basically change the potential difference across here and it'll change the current. So if we do this in one direction, um, where our ammeter and our voltmeter are both reading positive numbers, then we might potentially end up with a line like this. To get this line, we simply swap our battery around the opposite way. So our current and our potential difference are both reading negative numbers now, and you basically get exactly the same thing mirrored in this line here where y equals minus x. So you end up with exact, basically this side and this side are symmetric. If we then swap this resistor out for a different resistor, uh, we potentially end up with a line that looks like this instead. Um, we want, what we might want to do is say, okay, which of these two things has got the greatest resistance? Well, we've got two ways of doing that. We've got a descriptive way. So if we look, for example, at one particular potential difference, so this potential difference here, um, if we look at this potential difference, then the red, the resistor that made the that generated the red line, um, has got a much smaller current than the one that generated the blue line. So the red one must have the biggest resistance, and it's got a big resistance because less current is flowing for the same potential difference. And it's important that we mention the word same potential difference. Um, so for the for the same potential difference, less current flows, therefore we have a bigger resistance. You can also look at this mathematically. So if we worked out, for example, the gradient, let's imagine we want to work out the gradient of one of these lines. The gradient is given by the difference in y divided by the difference in x. So what you're basically doing is you're working out a current divided by a potential difference. So you're looking at i divided by v. If we go back to this thing, then we can see that the resistance is given by the potential difference divided by the current, like that. Well, these are kind of the wrong way up for this. So if I take this and I work out the reciprocal of these, in other words, I do one divided by, by both sides. If I do one divided by this side, I just get this. If I do one divided by this side, I it flips it over so it looks like that. So I, And that is what I've got here. So V over I is one over the gradient. So if I want to work out the resistance of a component like this from the gradient of this line, if I work out the gradient, and I do 1 divided by the gradient, it will give me the resistance. And I can see that if I've got a big gradient, I have a small resistance and vice versa, which is exactly what we see on here. So that's for a ohmic conductor like a resistor. If we look at, for example, a bulb, we can do exactly the same thing. And again, this will be familiar from um, GCSE. If you alter the, the potential difference of the current, what you'll see is it starts off where the two look directly proportional and then you'll hit a point where it starts to curve like this where the resistance is increasing and if you remember from GCSE what's going on is the current is flowing along here the more energy that is passing along here some of it's transferred to these ions and so these ions that are vibrating around anyway start to vibrate more so they vib so the the amplitude of these vibrations is bigger and so they potentially get in the way of these electrons more so the electrons find it more difficult to move along so if you count how many electrons go past this point, less will go past when this thing is hot, simply because these things are getting in the way of these electrons. So in that case, the, because it's hotter, the resistance has increased, and that's what's going on here. So you have a small resistance and the, here, which you could work out from the gradient of this straight line, but then the resistance increases as, you, as the potential difference increases. 
and it's and this is exactly the same. It's just in the, the current's flowing in the opposite direction. So that's a light bulb. For a diode, so this is a diode. What you will see again, this graph will be familiar from GCSE. What you will see is that um, in the forward direction, so where these two things are, would potentially read a positive number, nothing happens for short for small potential differences. But then once you reach about 0.6 volts, then a current starts to flow. In the opposite direction, you don't get any current flowing whatsoever, and that's because here you've got a really, really, really big resistance. So in the opposite direction, you have a really big resistance. So you have a large resistance here. On this side, the resistance is big to start off with, and then all of a sudden the diode kind of switches on, and then it allows a current to flow. And as the potential difference increases, the current increases too. So if we put all of those things together, we've seen that potential difference should be proportional to current, and it is, provided, for example, the temperature stays the same, and other external factors stay the same, really. So, uh, for example, as we'll see in a little while, light intensity or could also potentially affect the resistance. Um, so this is our definition of Ohm's law, that the current and the potential difference are directly proportional to each other, provided temperature and other factors remain constant. We can also describe conductors as being either ohmic or non-ohmic. An ohmic conductor is one where the resistance of a conductor is a constant, so basically the resistance doesn't change. A non-ohmic conductor is one where the resistance of our con of isn't basically the resistance doesn't stay the same. So this is basically a resistor. So resistors are examples of non of ohmic conductors. Non ohmic conductors, um, for example, bulb and a diode, as we've as we've seen. Also, um, thermistor, because if we change the temperature, the resistance changes. Um, LDRs are also non ohmic conductors. So all of those things are non ohmic. This thing here is an ohmic conductor. So if we look at these two again in slightly more detail, again from GCSE, these two graphs will be familiar. So these two things are, so this is your thermistor and this is your um, light dependent resistor. Both of these things are made of semiconductors. So they're, they're made of semiconductors. And what a semiconductor is, is basically it's, it's something that normally wouldn't conduct electricity. So you don't have these free electrons around. But if you can give these ions enough energy, then what will happen is the electrons in the outer shells will then basically become free. And so once you get to a certain energy, some of these electrons will become free and will be able to actually flow as a current. And so we'll potentially go in this way. The more energy you give to this thing, the more electrons become free. And if you have a greater number of electrons, then you have a greater charge passing a certain point, and so therefore you have a greater current. And that's exactly what happens here. The greater the temperature, the more energy has been given to these, these ions, and so more electrons are being freed up, which means that a current can flow, and the higher the temperature, the greater the current. And so because there's a greater current, then we see the resistance going down, and you end up with a graph like this. Um, for an LDR, exactly the same thing happens apart from instead of being affected by temperature, it gets affected by light intensity. So the more light that shines on here, the light is basically giving energy to these things, which frees electrons up. Again, when we've got free electrons, then we can, we'll can we observe a current, and so we'll see the resistance going down. So that's basically Ohm's law and IV graphs. Um, we looked at a resistor, which is an ohmic conductor, um, and a light bulb and a diode, which are non-ohmic conductors. Uh, we had a definition for Ohm's law, which you need to learn as well as the definition of an ohmic and a non-ohmic conductor. And finally, I had a really quick recap, from again from GCSE, of how the resistance varies with temperature for a thermistor and for an LDR. Um, so that's it from me for Ohm's Law. Um, I hope to see you again soon.